Okay, in these next videos, we're going to be building single page apps with React. Um, and I, I understand that there's probably a few people who have never even built a single page app before they're going to be watching this. So I'm going to try to not leave you behind while not um, kind of making it too beginner for the people who are very familiar with Angular or maybe Backbone, Ember, other single page application frameworks. So basically, a single page application is just you want to be able to navigate, do everything you normally do without ever leaving the page. It all happens within JavaScript. Notifications and alerts pop up in real time. You don't have to navigate away. So that's a single page application. Um, and here's kind of what I got going on. I didn't want to do it in just boring HTML, although this really isn't beautiful HTML. I went to startbootstrap.com, grabbed a really basic theme, stripped out jQuery out of it. I went to Bootswatch grabbed a different looking um, bootstrap CSS theme because bootstrap kind of looks a little generic on its own. It looks very generic on its own. And although I'm not super in love with bootstrap, it's really fast to manipulate. So that's why I went with it for these tutorials. Uh, and then I went to bootstrap without jQuery. So that way bootstrap requires a little bit of JavaScript for stuff like this. You can see this right here, Boop, these little sliders. Uh, that is, re, you know, normally requires jQuery for that, which is a little overkill. So Bootstrap without jQuery JS lets those little bit of Bootstrap animations happen without ever loading jQuery on our page. So that gives me basically this HTML. I'll show you what I got here, and this is all in GitHub again. And then, so I've got here's my Bootswatch CSS, and then my client min.js, just like we had in the first five videos. And then I've got my div ID app just like we had in the first five videos. And we'll be starting here and moving forward, building out a full single page app. So let's go ahead and get into how we're going to do this. Again, the client, just like last time, is loading in a layout, it's finding ID app, and it's rendering my layout into that ID. So nothing magical going on. Um, the first thing we'll wanna set up is routing. So that's where when we click on buttons, we can actually route to different pages, different states of the application, without ever actually leaving the HTML page. It all happens in JavaScript. And for React, we're going to want to use React Router. And we're going to go npm install s React Router. Get that going. And then we also want to add history for HTML5 history. So npm install s history. And history has version 2.0, but that is not, that's only supported with React Router 2.0, which is not out yet. So we want to do history at version 1 which I think we'll grab 1.17. Yeah, I grabbed history at 1.17. So those are added to our package JSON. We got history, we got React Router. Now we'll just hit NPM install for the rest. And all this will be in GitHub at whatever state we end up leaving this section of tutorials off with. So a lot of this will already be done for you. And then as one of my awesome viewers pointed out, um, whenever you're running a script in NPM, it automatically adds node modules slash dot bin to the path. So you don't actually have to do this part. You can just run Webpack Dev Server. And if that file, Webpack Dev Server, exists in bin, which it does, you can just execute it as a command. As long as you're doing it from a node script, it's going to work great. So thank you very much for that tip. Pass it on to you guys. And we're installed. We're good to go. We can run npm run dev. And we're rocking and rolling. Let's make sure this is still good to go. Okay. Killernews.net is the only only thing that's actually dynamic on my page right now. It's That is my layout component. Everything else here is static HTML. So as we go, we're going to be converting this all over to dynamic. Um, and let's just go ahead and start with our routes. Our routes are, as we click, the hash, the hash part of our navigation up here will change and allow us to go to different pages and different states of our application. So React Router is installed, so we can now import it here. Uh, we're actually going to go router and then route and then index route. We want to have an index route as well. And then hash history to get our HTML5 history booting up. We're importing all of those from React Router. And this is all on React Router's GitHub page, so this is nothing magical here. And then instead of rendering a layout, we're simply going to render our router. Here we go. Let's clean this up a little bit. We got our router rendered, and then we're going to get history booted up here. So there we go. That's all it really takes to officially get React Router going. 
And then you can render out all your routes and point them to different components. So our, our basic route is going to be our layouts. And then that's got a path of root. And the component for that is layouts. So I've already imported layout, and I can inject layout there. So that's how that's working. And then I can close out that route. So now my app should still be working. Let's make sure it all goes. Bundle's valid. It's reloading. And killernews.net is still rendering. So that's my layout rendering here for the default path, which is just forward slash. So now I can add some sub routes to this. Kind of how, how your React layout will work is your layout's going to be whatever's on your entire page. So that's going to be my navigation up here. Uh, and that's going to be my footer down here. And then all the other child routes will get loaded in here, depending on which page I'm on, which state I'm on. Um, and that layout might even load in several different components, like it'll load in a navigation component. It'll load in a footer component. For now, we just have killernews.net. So let's go ahead and just show you how to make your first few routes, and then we'll start breaking this page out in the next video. So let's go ahead and make an index route here. Um, an index route. Uh, let's uh, make our components here first. So you notice I actually created a pages folder, and I put layout in there. So kind of those top level pages, kind of what we're considering featured, archives, settings. I'm going to put all those in a pages folder just so it's a little easier uh, to get to them. So I'm going to go save this as featured. I'm going to go ahead and just hack these now. Featured, featured. There you go. Now let me go save this as what are archives and settings. And then settings, same thing. Okay, so I have featured archives and settings. Let's go ahead and import those now again into client. Got them all in, they're not alphabetical. Ah, come on, OCD, have to do it. A, B, C, D, F, G, all right, we're good. And then let's go ahead and load, our index route will be featured. Path, uh, that's the same path, that's our default, it's our index route, duh, so I'm leaving that there. Component gets featured. And now we can actually add some other routes down here. And they'll have different paths. So this path will be slash archives. And that'll get the archives component. Component. And I can copy and paste that. One more time for settings. Excellent. So now we should actually be able to route back and forth. Let's make sure everything's working. No typos. Page loads, great. So now we can actually get to those. Uh, let me go to my layout and pretend we're building a little navigation here. So I've got killernews.net. Let's go to wrap this in a div. Let's go ahead and make our first button. Uh, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to import link from React Router. Uppercase link. And that's going to allow me to do just a link. So instead of doing an A tag with an href in it, I'm actually just going to do a link tag. Uh, and that's going to have a 2 in it. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that link. And this will go to, what is it, archives? Yeah, so I've created this link tag here. And now all I have to do is give it a place that I'm going to, which is simple. You just add a 2. And that's going to work. So let's say it's going to hot reload in here. Archives takes me to slash archives. Excellent. It's going to load archives. It's going to grab that component and it's going to inject that component archives as a child component to layout. So it's basically going to send this dot props dot children is going to be this guy right here. So now all we have to do is render out this dot props dot children wherever we want it to be. So what React Router has done, again, is it's taken whatever we've given it as children, 
which in this case, it's going to match, hey, you're a child, you match, we're correctly on this path, you match as a valid child. We're going to go ahead and inject you as this prop's children, and now we can spit that out wherever in layout we want it to appear. And now we've got our first, there you go, archives is there. So now let's go ahead and add another link here to settings. So let's reload. Settings will take me to settings. There we go. Dynamically happened. Archives. And you'll notice that the hash navigation is also changing up there. Settings, archive, settings, archives. Great. Um, and there's some other ways that you can do this as well. So you can do the link. Uh, you could also wrap, say you wanted to do a button. I could just wrap my button in the link, like so. And that will work. So that'll still get me to settings. I can even make this a bootstrap button. BTN, BTN success. So you load up. There you go. So that's going to work. Settings, archive settings. Um, and honestly, you can just put these classes as well because Bootstrap allows you to put these classes on links as well. So let's say you're a button danger. There you go. Archives, settings. Um, and then another thing you can do is you can also just kind of call this programmatically. Um, I can just do a button here. I can do an on click. Is this dot navigate. And we'll make you go to featured back home. And so now we can add a this dot navigate here. And I'm just going to console log this dot props so you can see what react router injects into those props for you so when i hit featured here's my props that i'm getting i'm getting a props children again which is a react component i'm also getting this history option i'm getting this history thing i'm getting a route which is the path that i'm on so i'm getting a route object i'm getting any route params and so navigates right there i get a lot of stuff so what I, the prop that i'm looking for is history and then i can simply push a state and I'm going to go to, where are we going? Featured. I'm just going to just my root. So there we go. And now the featured button will push state and take me back home. There we go. It pushed me back home. And I'm on featured. Archives, settings, featured. Another thing I can do now, whenever you push state, you get the back button. So my back button takes me to settings. If you notice right there, push state, back button took me to settings. I can also replace state. And now it will not get the back button. It'll just say, hey, my, my state's going to just switch out right away. I'm there. I'm going to hit featured. There we go. I'm there. And if I, if I hit the back button, I stay right where I am because that was where I started off. So replace state is very different from push state. Very important for you to know. And that's your basic navigation. I know I kind of flew through that because there was a lot to cover. But I didn't want to break it up into three videos for you. So... Again, just take your client JS. I'm going to go ahead and push this code already to GitHub for those of you guys who are following this series as it's coming out. Um, go ahead and mess around with routes a little bit, and we'll get into some more cool features in the next video.